And for more about all this, I'm joined by Congressman Adam Schiff, the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thank you very much. You bet. Uh, we now have heard within the last hour from Colonel Steve Warren, we are reasonably certain that the target, Jihadi John Mwazi, was killed. And we've certainly heard on camera from John Kerry, from the Prime Minister David Cameron, they must be reasonably certain, they must pretty well know that they got their target. Well, I'm sure that they feel very confident on the basis of what they were watching at the time of the strike. Uh, we won't get DNA evidence from this uh, because we don't have access to the site. So, yes, we will be reliant uh, really for confirmation by listening to what the jihadis say amongst themselves about the, the loss uh, we expect of uh, jihadi Jan. Uh, but it's rare for military officials or the secretary to come out this early, this confident. Uh, they must be, you know, feeling uh, quite certain based on the evidence of what we observed and, uh, and other technological means that we got our target. Uh, and frankly, if he died uh, in an instant and was incinerated, uh, it was a better death than he deserved. Uh, this is someone who killed uh, members of, of the press, uh, human uh, aid workers. Uh, with no remorse, the most grotesque fashion. Uh, so, you know, I, I do think it's uh, an important uh, milestone in taking out this very public uh, face and voice of ISIS. Uh, it isn't going to alter the I don't think appro uh, appreciably in terms of at the tactical or strategic level, but nonetheless it sends a message. Uh, you take the lives of Americans, we're going to come after you. We'll be patient, we'll be methodical, but we will get you. And I appreciate you're putting it in that context because operationally, you still have ISIS being able to take down a civilian plane, uh, presumably according to all the intelligence that, uh, that I've been able to glean, and also uh, claiming responsibility for the bombings in Beirut, which is ramping up their attack against Hezbollah and uh, Nasrallah and whom they consider their enemy. Yes, I mean, you know, you can certainly look at different facets of this fight and see areas where ISIS is expanding. They're building a greater presence in places like Afghanistan. Very troubling what's going on in Libya. Uh, if we're not careful, you could see a large area of Libya at some point held by ISIS. Uh, nonetheless, there is increasing pressure on ISIS. We're going after their oil resources. Uh, we're increasing the number of our sorties. The Russians are likely to concentrate more of their air power now on ISIS. Uh, and shift away from attacking the more moderate rebels. Uh, you have the offensive going on in Sinjar by the Peshmerga. Uh, you have the encirclement of Ramadi. So ISIS is feeling a lot of pressure on the one hand, and yet on the other, it has the, the resilience as well as the ability to attract followers that still makes it a very lethal threat around the world. How did we track this guy down, do you think, uh, with, without, I know you can't talk about intelligence, briefings, but presumably they had some signals intelligence. Did they have some evidence, given how hard a target it is to get ground truth out of Raqqa? Well, it'll be a combination of factors, uh, and I can't go into great specifics, but as you can imagine, we have some sources of human intelligence, uh, uh, often through some of our uh, sister or liaison relationships in the region. Uh, we have signals intelligence, as you mentioned. Uh, we have uh, often uh, aerial surveillance uh, and when you put all those streams of intelligence together it's a process of refining and refining and refining until you're quite certain of your target uh, and then once you've identified those essentially those selectors those bits of information uh, then you watch for the opportunity when that uh, individual is apart from others or only in the company of other ISIS members uh, and often you have to be very patient for that opportunity and I expect we were very patient here uh, before taking that strike. Adam Schiff, thank you very much, Congressman. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Andrea.